The United Nations General Assembly last week took an interesting step to address the controversy over the use of the veto power in the Security Council. Under the UN Charter, each of the Security Council's five permanent members, China, France, Russia, the United Kingdom, and the United States, have the power to veto any substantive matter under consideration by the Council. This veto power is a legacy of the outcome of World War II and has been decried by a wide variety of countries as being an out-of-date system that does not accurately account for the distribution or reflect the needs of the current international system. Why, for example, do France and the United Kingdom have a veto power, while countries like Brazil, India, and Japan do not? Why is Europe and the West so overrepresented on the Council, while the countries of the Global South are so underrepresented? And what can be done to prevent abuses of the veto power by the major international powers, abuses that critics sometimes argue undermine the efficacy of the United Nations more generally? Hey everyone, I'm Noah Zerbe. I'm a professor of global politics at California State Polytechnic University Humboldt. In this video series, I try to explain the concepts and theories behind current events, all in two minutes or less. The measure passed by the General Assembly last week does not eliminate the veto power or address the structural imbalances in the current composition of the Council. Instead, the consensus resolution requires that the General Assembly hold a debate on the situation that sparked the veto within 10 working days of the veto power being used. The Assembly would not be required to take any specific action, nor would it have the power to override the veto. Rather, it's intended to put the spotlight on potential abuses of the veto and to permit countries that are not part of the Security Council to be heard on important international issues. As such, it's a fairly limited measure that's intended really only to draw attention to the use of the veto rather than to restructure the veto power or reform the Security Council more generally. Interestingly, while the measure was adopted by consensus, meaning that no countries officially opposed the proposal, it did have its critics. Most notable among these were the permanent Security Council members Russia, China, and France, as well as countries like Belarus and India. Other proposals for more dramatic reform of the Security Council have been stalled for years. Among them are proposals to expand the size of the Council by increasing the number of permanent members by adding countries like Japan, Brazil, Germany, India, Nigeria, and others, as well as increasing the number of non-permanent or rotating seats on the Council. There have also been proposals to suspend the veto power in the case of mass atrocities or genocide, or to permit the General Assembly to override the veto of one power through a supermajority vote. However, any of these more radical reforms would require the Security Council's approval and would thus be subject to the very same veto power that the critics of the Council argue paralyzed the organization more generally. That's it for now. If you're interested in learning more about the United Nations system, you can check out my UN playlist, which I'll link to in the description below. If you found this helpful, click the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to catch future explainers as they're released. Please leave any questions you have about this video in the comments section below, and if you have any suggestions for future explainer topics, I'd welcome those as well. Thanks everyone. Bye.